everyone. Hi, I'm Misa Jeffries. I'm assistant curator here at CAM. Thank you so much for coming out <coughs> to our special program, Work in Progress with Claudia Compte. And Claudia, thank you so much for allowing us to be in this space before the installation is complete and for sharing with us today. We're really very excited to hear from you. Um, so I wanted to just give a rundown for the program. We're planning to speak for about 20 to 25 minutes, then we'll open it up to questions from the audience. So um, I thought I would do a little bit of background on you mm -hmm. first, and then you can speak about your work. Um, so just to let you all know a little bit about Claudia. She lives and works between Berlin and Grancy. Is that how it's pronounced? Grancy, yeah. It's, Grancy. A, it's a tiny village of 300 people okay. in the countryside in Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she's shown her work in solo and group exhibitions all over the world at venues such as the Kunsthalle Basel in Switzerland, Desert X in Palm Springs, Koenig Gallery in Berlin, and Public Art Fund and Gladstone Gallery in New York. For Cam's 60-foot-long project wall, Claudia presents her most graphically complex wall painting to date. The installation is called Electric Burst, Lines, and Zigzags. She is known for her multimedia installations that often include wooden sculptures, spatial graphics, and site-specific paintings, which together transform the exhibition space into an immersive environment. The zigzag pattern that you see here is a motif that Claudia has investigated across numerous projects. It produces optical illusions when viewed from different perspectives. So, Claudia, if you want to speak about your work more generally, maybe mm -hmm. we'll start with that and then get more specific with the wall. Piece. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, maybe just a little note for you guys. I really tried hard to <laughs> unveil the wall painting a little bit more than <laughs> these tiny lines that you see here <laughs> on the wall, but we need to wait a little bit that the paint is, the, is drying. That's why it looks a bit dark at the moment, but uh, like about tomorrow already it will be all um, the tape will be all removed and um, the whole wall painting will be unveiled you can probably see already kind of the the graphic underneath and i will show you also uh, an image on my computer in a bit um yeah maybe first to explain you about my my work and my background so we were mentioning just before this uh, village where i grew up where i still live uh, in, uh, in the countryside in Switzerland, in the French part. Um, I grew up in a chalet, in a wood uh, chalet, um, near the forest. And uh, I'm also very attracted by wood, so I have this different type of um, uh, yeah, medium, different references in my work that creates one one uh, one core, uh, one one body uh, in the end. Um, so in in one hand, uh, I work a lot with uh, chainsaw. I do lots of uh, wood sculpture that I high, uh, that I polished very carefully. There is a magazine behind you about uh, the the the, gal the gallery I'm working with in in Berlin. We just did the big show there last week that just opened. And there is a series of big trunk where I open uh, inside to place smaller sculpture into the heart of the trunk. And uh, on the other hand, I have all those uh, graphic, those pattern, um, sometimes black and white, sometimes very colorful that I play with. So mainly I I'd love to, like Misa explained, uh, create environment with my wall painting, with my painting. Uh, to then set a system to show the, the sculpture on the top or within the space. So for example, this is a book uh, I've done last year that reproduced those kind of collage that I'm doing in three dimension in the, in the space that you see again on the, on the pages. So this is typically the kind of uh, sculpture that I'm doing out of wood. Those are relatively medium to small size. And this is all my research that I do on the computer about pattern, grid, lines, etc. Sometimes, yeah, I try to imbue a certain type of life or so, so also some humor in the, that can be the wall painting or the sculpture. 
So you have sometimes those kind of onomatopoeia that I love to graphically to, to use into, in the shows or in the, uh, in the books I'm doing. Uh, I have this series that I presented, for example, at the, at the City Hall Park in, uh, in New York for my first collaboration with the Public Art Fund, where I do those, um, those uh, smaller wood sculptures that I 3D scan and then render all into marble. So here you only see the wood, but that's also one part of, uh, of my work. So lots of lines, uh, half circle, dots, etc. And I really love this mix, having a sculpture in front of the, um, of the wall painting that really reveal even more the shape of the sculpture and that creates yeah, like, I, I mean, I, for me, my, my sculpture are like uh, babies. It's also so much work, uh, you can imagine, with the, with the chainsaw and then polishing and then working with the grinder, etc. It's, yeah, I like to create them very nice environment they can uh, live in, kind of. This one is doing a little, we don't know if it's a little fart or a little <laughs> <laughs> things like this. Those are two donuts. <laughs> I love the, the shape of the donuts. I, I work a lot with that. This one is a big uh, Z, etc. And then maybe we can speak about this wall a little bit more. I have done this, uh, this long wall in uh, Palm Springs. In the, in the desert. This was called uh, Curves and Zigzag. It was, uh, oof, I don't know, I cannot tell in foot or inches. It was 30 meter long by three meter. Mm, so if anyone can. 90, 90 feet or so. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> um, so it's the same um, pattern on both sides. The, the point here was really to, to work directly with nature. I have this connection, again, because I guess of my childhood with, uh, with nature. I love to, to look at patterns that you can find into nature and then work them through the computer-generated um, program, um, um, kind of digest my own pattern, in this case, uh, black and white. Here, what's interesting is uh, that every line is different. So this zigzag is not the same than this one, than this one, because of course it's evolving until the end to turn, to morph into curves. And uh, this was a really big success in, the, in, like in, uh, in Palm Springs, close to LA, because, and I was so surprised because it's a wall, it's a freestanding wall, it's just a black and white pattern on it, but I thought people can really bond with the pattern when you look at it uh, closely enough or for, um, for a, a longer time. It, even this that may seem cold first can really bring you some kinds of um, joy because it's so related to the nature around, meaning here we have the desert, it's very complex with all those rocks, the mountains, all the little trees, etc. And it's, it may seem messy, but actually it's nature, so it's extremely structured. And there is a whole um, system behind it that sometimes we, we are not able to see because it's so, yeah, it's so complex actually. And I, and I like mainly to point out what, we, what is already existing around us, but that sometimes we, yeah, we are not always uh, able to, to reveal. And um, about this wall now, this is still uh, investigating this uh, zigzag shape that I love. Again, you have seen now some of the pattern I'm, I'm creating and I'm using. And uh, I think I really especially love the zigzag because it's, it's inside this, this grid, you can imagine, and it always goes back and forth, and uh, it kind of make me think about it can represent the past and the future, and it's more complex than a line, and it's more playful as well. And um, yeah, it's something that, that I think graphically, visually is very strong and express lots of um, interesting things. So about wall paintings, I've done this, this show last year in, uh, in Switzerland, 
in a, in a museum called, called Kunstmuseum Luzern. And uh, yeah, maybe to show you a little bit more about uh, what I was explaining, these uh, settings with wall painting and sculpture, etc. Uh, this was at the very beginning. I like to play a lot with my initial as well. So those are two half circles, but those are also my uh, CC, like Claudia Comte. And um, this was the very first wall, wall painting in the room. I took the challenge in this uh, show because there were 10 rooms. And when I visited first the, um, the museum, the director told me that the, most of the artists were kind of uh, freaking out with the, with the whole uh, space because it looked like a, kind of a labyrinth somehow. You have uh, this huge, I, I work a lot with plants, that's why I am, <laughs> we like with the map of the, of the space I'm working, that, that, that's why I'm, um, I'm uh, thinking about, about this. So you have this one building and then it's all separated into a grid and you have then those 10 uh, rooms, meaning one long and then nine into kind of squarish uh, uh, size. All, all relatively the same. So for me, it's like a big piece of cake. It was, I thought it was fantastic to use that. And um, since the director was telling me, yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, scary for most of the artists because, uh, because there is so much surface and the walls are so tall and, and uh, it's difficult to take over the whole space. I thought, okay, it's exactly what I need to do actually. And uh, since there is 10 room, there is of course 40 walls. And I said, I want to do 40 wall paintings, which is a little bit crazy because uh, I had a little bit less than three weeks. And normally, like here, uh, now we are doing these wall paintings in, in a week. And it's one wall. So I thought uh, I can <laughs> develop anyway a system so it can work. And uh, I, de I developed these, those different uh, type of family. This is the vinyl one. So this require a lot of uh, work, very precise. You, you apply um, sheet by sheet on the wall. So the, the design was made, uh, first of all, of course, on the computer. Then uh, Merlu, that is here, hiding. <laughs> uh, in Switzerland, cut the, cut the material. It's like a gigantic st uh, stickers. Uh, and then we apply the, the sheet on the, on the wall and then remove some parts, etc., etc. We need to press a lot and then paint on the top and then paint black or whatever color needs to be done, the, the wall painting. And now we are just at this point just before we are removing everything that we don't need that will reveal the whole, um, whole, whole wall painting. So this is the wall painting family, like, uh, like this one, created by Dot. This is a big uh, uh, painting uh, modular also. I love to work uh, with modularity. So when you acquire a work, you can decide yourself how to hang it. In this case, those are four shape canvas. So for this show, I thought to show it like this, but you could also put those uh, four half circle into a line. There were so giant swings, so people <laughs> could swing in the first room to, to uh, imagine the whole, um, yeah, have an, a different experience in the show. So that was the first room. Uh, and here, this is another type of uh, family now, made with long uh, roller, strikes. So I did a very big zigzag with one strike every time, creating, of course, a kind of gradient because the more you apply the paint, the less uh, there is on the roller. So this had taken a few hours and this was like a few days. So I created a kind of a balance in between them all. This is a graffiti, so another type of family with the Greek columns. Those are some other uh, shape canvas that I'm doing here with one strike of brush. That's the room in the other direction. Here again, playing with my, um, with my shape canvas. Oops. Uh, an onomatopoeia. So it's, it's funny and I, and I really insist on this because I think something really serious can also be funny at the same time. So it also explore what I've learned at school. Uh, I did the School of Art in Lausanne where um, 
uh, I got this kind of heritage about um, Neo Geo and uh, on the, man the minimalist also and um, what's, what's um, how to, not how, because we didn't learn how, but how, yeah, maybe to, to develop a certain work about um, geometrical uh, shape and uh, paintings. And yeah, it's this kind of heritage, like maybe with uh, John Armleder or Olivier Mosse. And at the same time, to kind of give them a little bit of life to those paintings, because I'm, you know, it's again about giving energy into work, and I'm really in 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 um, in a sense for me they are kind of alive. So I give them the freedom to maybe move or like uh, be more free, not always be shown the same. So here you have. Uh, three different paintings, and they are all explode into a big uh, rectangle that made me think about this video game called Shuffle Puck. Maybe some of you know. <laughs> so, yeah, the same series, you can show them like this, but maybe you can also show them in a different way. This is again this uh, family of uh, roller wall painting, and this is made by tape, so it's very precise, it takes some time as well. And some are really quicker, like a little one like this. This is, again, the same series where I execute the painting in, a, in one uh, a strike of brush. And then, here we go again. I mix them with my, uh, with my wood sculpture. Here, big uh, cactuses. Those, this one is uh, five meter high, so it's... Um, yeah, maybe in the middle of this uh, gray wall here. It's quite tall. So about, the, about this wood, it's all coming from Switzerland. It's oak wood. I sourced the wood for uh, many years before I could find this because it's important for me to, to use wood that has been cutted because this or that resin or that uh, needs to be cut because maybe it's too, it's too big or it's, it's uh, getting too, too old. And... Um, yeah, those, those big trunks are uh, not so easy to, to source in Switzerland. We have good wood, but it's not le the same than uh, maybe the Sequoia Park in Calif California. Even if I would love to have some trunks from there. So here I did this whole family of cactus where I give them name as well. This is Luca, this is Aurelien, Eric, that's my father. So the, the names of the sculpture are always inducted by the name of the, um, the context of the production meaning that here it's half some members of my family or some people that helped me during the, during the production, so meaning my assistant. So this is uh, maybe, I know. This, this one is like the, the big one. I have an assistant really, really, how do you say, uh, musculate or very, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, let's say strong from Canada, actually, and this is Toby. So from <laughs> he, he mainly worked on this one. And uh, yeah, some more rooms, some more paintings. This is other works as well, black and white. I love the black and white or very colorful one. Here, this is another type of wall painting where I uh, threw eggs uh, from ostrich and um, the big splash is from ostrich and smaller from, uh, from uh, chicken field of paint, of course. This is another type with grid and, uh, and made by hand. So it, it shows a little bit about my, the, those different family I was, uh, I was telling you about. And um, yeah, what, uh, <laughs> there is so much we could speak about. Yeah, sure. Maybe you have a question, yeah. so. I mean, your work is a, a pretty fine balance between sort of rigor and seriousness in combination with the playful and the joyful mm -hmm. aspect. Um, I wonder if maybe we could speak about the kind of rigorous aspects mm -hmm. of this piece of electric burst. Um, in previous wall works, you've kind of worked within the parameters of the space or of the wall, and then sometimes imposed sort of like a 
a system or a way of coming up with a rule-based measurement that helps you to make the design. I'm curious to know if that's something that happened with this wall, if there is a kind of logic behind the piece. <clears throat> so yeah, the logic was, I think the most important for me here was to have this very nice wall that is, you know, to have so much space around, it's really um, like a privilege to, to work with this kind of uh, surface. And I thought I want to do something very complex on uh, on the surface because here the idea is not to bring sculpture in the room or to put my uh, my uh, shape canvas, my paintings on the top of the wall painting. So here it was important that the wall painting is uh, living for itself and not uh, combined with other uh, piece. That's why I thought it's the time to do very hardcore version <laughs> on uh, of a zigzag um, that I again explore since uh, since a long time. That's why you cannot really see here. I'll show you. What makes a it picture. so hardcore or kind of complex? Well, some of the okay. So in a few hours, it should look like this. <laughs> it's difficult <laughs> to imagine, but yeah. And um, some of the spike, especially here are very, very thin. We said before, thin as a hair. It's almost as thin as a hair. And um, if you imagine to prepare the, the file on the computer, it's already difficult to take everything in, um, in uh, yeah, to, to be, to, 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 yeah, to, to be careful with all those parameters, and then to cut the, the big sheets of vinyl on the machine, because of course this machine is going back and forth and doing all those cuts. It's also very sensitive, so it stays all very precise, and then to apply it, and then that it's not moving on the wall uh, while we are painting on the surface. It's, yeah, it's lots of technical uh, aspects that are very challenging. Mm -hmm. And that's what is what makes it even more uh, interesting, I think. Okay. And then uh, what I really like about those wall painting is really uh, it's really about the teamwork because I cannot do this alone. Of course, it's uh, lots of different stage like preparing everything before and then on site working with the with the technician here and also that we, we are different people, but we are uh, trying to create like one, um, yeah, one group, because it's like, it's, it should be, the whole, the whole wall should be treated the same uh, way the, on the whole surface. So it's not like someone can do like this and then someone do like this. <laughs> it's like, we have to be, yeah, together and uh, uh, accord ourselves on the same, um, yeah, on the same technique or, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, since I've done a few of those uh, zigzag before, here I wanted really to do something more complex because I think visually it will really create something. It's not the point that people get uh, sick, of course, in front of it, but I think the, the whole um, pattern can um, yeah, really create, I, I mean, I, I'd like to, to push the, the limit of the painting method and the wall painting even uh, further, actually. And um, yeah, that's the challenge, and that's what what's interests me in here. So it starts here with a slight kind of a half zigzag, then it goes down. It's, uh, it's a little bit more um, calm here. And then it starts again and goes really um, extreme uh, on this end. And um, I think uh, I will be very happy to see how this part looks as well because it kind of creates, I think, w we will see, but from far or closer, a kind of a gradient because the lines are almost touching each other, but not completely. And I think this will be visually very, very interesting. What is the intention for the audience? I mean, we're meant to walk past this and it might even create some kind of almost like an apparition or an illusion of space or of the piece changing and morphing. Same with the piece at Desert X. It seems like it was meant to be walked past. Is there an intention for the audience or a way that you're hoping we experience the piece? 
Yeah, I, I really hope, uh, and especially here, because again, there is so much space around that you can appreciate the wall painting uh, with different views, you know, uh, coming from here or yeah. from there or from the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, even up, <laughs> this is great, or from the um, uh, courtyard. And um, yeah, once, uh, one of my very first zigzag actually in another museum in, in Switzerland, when I, uh, during the opening, there were a young guy uh, that started to run in the room and looking very close at it. And he was obviously um, a little bit, uh, how do you say, uh, handicapped or something, you know? And uh, I thought that was great if everyone would look at it like this, you know, because he was really turning around and looking from very close and from very far. And I'm sure he's probably the person who enjoyed it the most, you know? So I wouldn't say I encourage you all now to run in front of it and jump and everything, but uh, I guess that would be really nice for me to, yeah, to, to see people engage with. And again, that may sound funny because it's a wall and it's a wall painting on a wall. So it's, it's very, it's something that is not moving and it's, it's, it may seem like something kind of dead. And for me, it's very much about being alive. Like, I, I like to take it in, on the other way around. And again, I think working on it so, so closely and putting so much energy is like, I think it's gonna give back something, actually, in the end. Mm -hmm. Not sounding any mystic or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I have several more questions, uh, and then, well, maybe, does anyone from the audience have any questions first, before I continue in the back? Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of curious, do you ever explore things, with something so large, do you explore things like um, um, billboard ideas and billboard paintings and the, the production of the way people do billboards as part of this Um, <clears throat> so for me, it's really important that uh, I create the system before that makes sense with the invitation I got, meaning the um, the space and yeah, what makes sense to to produce there. And then I always start with a very precise plan, and um, I'm not. Yeah, then, but then of course it's life, so things can uh, happen. So we had, for example, a few days ago, a little problem with the vinyl, and this was not on the computer before when I, when I was thinking about the project. So there is always a surprise, but in the end, I like that I create this system that I think might be the, I mean, that I hope is the best for the space, and then retranscribe it in the, in the reality. And um, about the billboard, I didn't understand the question actually. Well, billboard, billboards now use massive panels of vinyl uh -huh. um, that are yeah. put outside. And then you were talking about coming through this line of stencil mm -hmm. operation. And I was wondering ah. if you also just directly. Well, for, for me, uh, I use the vinyl because this would be impossible to do taping, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, I would love that, but yeah. And uh, in the end, it's very important for me that only the paint is remaining. So all the vinyl is just a support, uh, yeah, a, a tape masking technique to finally arrive to uh, at my end. And um, yeah, I, I would never imagine to do uh, a sign or a painting that wouldn't be a painting, but just vinyl on the on the wall. It's very important that we remove everything and only the paint is uh, is left in the end, like a skin on the wall, actually. Well, <laughs> <just> yeah. <laughs> Billboards 
that yeah, so that's right. I think because of the, 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 this one from uh, this long wall in Panthering is the third one of an uh, ongoing series. I did the first one, a uh, different one. I might have an image here. Um, in South of France, uh, it was a smaller wall, but what I found interesting here is that I was invited again for, in a sculpture part, very wild uh, style, and I thought I wanted to do a gigantic painting. So we built a freestanding wall for me to do the painting, and this, the, um, the pattern on it was inducted by the shape of the wall, and the wall was inducted by the pattern on it. And so I like to create my, if I don't have a wall like this already existing in the museum, that, that's the point with those freestanding wall to create yeah, the whole thing actually, the support and the painting on the top. And um, with the billboard, I, I can imagine, yeah, I, I think I'm more interested to yeah, create my own, own support as well. And a wall, it's, it's kind of absurd at the same time because you cannot move it anymore. You know, so if someone would like a wall like this, I have to go at his place and redo it. And I like this uh, this kind of absurdity as well because it's it's again about yeah spending time on uh, on site and and then the project may change because again it's another uh, it's another uh, space. Uh, ah yeah, but this one was the the second one. This was in in uh, Miami Beach for uh, Art Basel, and uh, it's called uh, 120 Triangles and their demonstration. So here the point was to cut the wall in two, have one big triangle, and then cut it here in two, have a smaller one, cut it in two, smaller, 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 smaller. Yeah? And finally, having this one, that is represented exactly 128 times here in the back. So this is the pattern that was created by this um, calcul or demonstration. And the one, ah, maybe I didn't put it. Ah, yeah. And this was the first one in South of France. Again, the same, um, oh, not trick, but like a calculation or uh, effort that this wall is, this is three by six meter, then you have the first square, three by three, divided by two, by two, by two, having those 16 here, and then this is the pattern. And um, yeah, I think, I really love those series of wall, and I hope I can make them all around the world <laughs> uh, with different shapes as well, because they, they very much look like uh, rendering. It al almost looks like it's not real. Yes. When you, uh, at least on photo, when you see them, of course, you understand. But uh, I like that you need to go all around also to, to discover the, the back and that both uh, direction makes sense also and to play with the, with the color. So here I choose the green because it was very green all around and it was reflecting again about the whole uh, surroundings and, and, uh, and this beautiful park. And then there were the blue one because it made me think about the ocean and the whole Miami yeah, situation, let's say. <laughs> yeah. So when you're talking about all of the effort that goes into something like this and all of the time, but the vast majority of the work that you do that's mural work is destroyed yeah. when it's over. So it also is really ephemeral. And that's something we deal with a lot. I and mean, we have a lot of like pain and suffering when you know we have these gorgeous shows on this wall and artists come in and they really think about the space and what audience members are gonna feel. And then at the end it's either taken down or painted over. And so I'm always <coughs> curious about how you as an artist feel about that, knowing that you're going in extraordinary effort knowing that you're really thinking about all of the time and the energy and the thought that goes into site specificity and also knowing that this is a work of art that really has a life that's like three and a half months. Um, yeah, I think for me the, the most important is to do it and then that people experiment it and then uh, 
it's a little bit sad, but I know I will make others as well. So um, when I have a good photo, so I can put it in a book, <laughs> then uh, then I'm very happy about the about the result. And of course, it's again about uh, this kind of energy I was uh, speaking about earlier. It's really on the on the moments, uh, what is now, uh, when when we work on it, and then everyone that will uh, get to see it and. Yeah, then there will be others, like little brother or sister, hopefully. <laughs> and I think in this case, I, I feel again really privileged because I know lots of other artists use this wall. And I think this is so great to be able to use the same um, gigant canvas, let's say, than other artists, and there will be more to come. So it makes it even more interesting, I think. Yeah. I was wondering if you ever look at the more mathematical side because the uh, the patterns you had before that was very similar to the Fibonacci sequence mm -hmm. now in spiral or even to permutations. And I was wondering if you ever really think about that extremely mathematical essence of it when you're planning these out. I'm really interested of it in it, but I'm I'm not directly referencing on it's more. I like to find my own very simple version of it because I have no pretension or anything uh, really truly scientific uh, behind it. So, for example, now in the show I just have done last week uh, in this gallery. I've uh, reproduced a few sculptures, for example, the pine cone, that is very important, again, into mathematics because of the endless pattern that it represents, or uh, a type of shell that, um, that, that has the exact same proportion than the golden section. And uh, this is already so, um, yeah, so perfect because it exists, and we are discovering this, and I, I'm really fascinated by this question that to know if we are, if it exists because we are discovering it, or if it was uh, created anyway, and uh, we get the, the chance now to to learn about this uh, universal uh, language, and um, yeah, about your your question, I think I'm I'm interested, like deeply interested by it, and uh, but not exactly referencing directly, like I'm not looking at the exact um, uh, system or measurement on this and then reproducing it. It's more like I adapt what I know from my uh, simple knowledge, let's say, to what I can do on, uh, on the, the space I, uh, I'm getting. Any other questions from the audience? So you said it's so important for you that these are paintings, mm -hmm. right? That that's a, a kind of major part of the concept. What are you doing when you're working outside? What is the difference in materials that you're using? How are they maintaining that extraordinary bright whiteness in a place like for this, Desert for X? example? Yeah, for that, for Miami. Well, for for this, it's. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Actually, we used exactly the same material that we are using here, yeah. Except that since it's outside and the sun was burning <laughs> and there were dust flying around and insects and people walking by with their dogs asking questions every 30 seconds, <laughs> it was a little bit different. But um, it, the, the, about the technique and the material, um, there is not so much flexibility. I like to be flexible in general, you know, but with this, it's more like um, respecting the, the timing of the, um, yeah, how long the paint should dry. For example, yeah, I wanted to rush now for you to, to show you the wall bending, but that's unfortunately not possible. 
And uh, the material is this uh, sensitive vinyl we, we use in general to make sure that the, the wall will not peel when we remove it. So, yeah, about the technique, there is not much. Yeah, we have to respect every, every step, really. But then how it was um, painted with varnish a few times to make sure that we could sometimes wash the wall. Because in this case, it really got a bit crazy. Some people uh, <laughs> were running on to go on the top of it to make photo. And so there were some, uh, <laughs> some uh, footsteps on it that we could uh, just wash. But that's also, you know, that's also the risk. And uh, I prefer that people really enjoy it than, uh, than there is this distance with the artwork that you cannot do. I mean, that's not the point to work on it, of course. And I, I don't like this, but I prefer that it's kind of, uh, again, alive than, uh, than there is this big distance in between. So I was happy that there were so many visits. And again, this was just so incredible for me to see all the images on Instagram. And uh, even though this media is very controver controversial and it's not the, the best also for, for humankind sometimes, it's just great for me to see with all the tags that, uh, yeah, people enjoy so much to take selfie with the piece. And it's also OK, because, um, yeah, I think it's if we would have a phone uh, already three or four hundred years ago, people would also have made selfie with the with the with the painting, you know. So that's actually nice to see what uh, people imagine with the piece. And some wedding were uh, <laughs> shot there, and uh, some people brought their favorite dinosaur costumes as well, and it was just <laughs> incredible to see that actually. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, some of your influences. Uh, just thinking about you growing up in um, Rancy and thinking about you being in the forest and you know nature really inspiring your practice, but also kind of like childhood games. And I'm thinking about now I won from our yeah. Basel. I think this uh, also what I'm developing uh, since the very beginning. I started to work is still very influenced by my childhood, you're right. So it's this mix with this kind of um, countryside version. For, my parents are not farmers, but like uh, surrounded by animals and nature. And um, video games that I played a lot when I was a kid to kind of counterbalance this boredom from the countryside as well, even if it was great. And um, also, I was very uh, marked by a trip I've done when I was 10 with my parents. We went to do a road trip in uh, California, Utah, Arizona, where we, we visited um, the national park. And having 10 years old and going there, again, coming from the Swiss countryside, these tiny villages where, th where there is more cows than people, actually, uh, it was really incredible because um, it was so vast and it was really referring, uh, it was like uh, kind of a dream come true. I had seen all the big blockbusters and, and uh, all those movies where you see those actual uh, background and then I realized this is actually uh, real and uh, it was incredible to, to see all that. And we spent almost uh, months um, yeah, visiting Grand Canyon and Las Vegas and Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, this was a, a ma an amazing time. And I think this really gave me uh, lots of uh, input in my work still now. For example, the <laughs> cowboy boots <laughs> and uh, this uh, series of cactus that you have seen earlier, which was actually my very first uh, chainsaw sculpture about 11 years ago when I started the uh, chainsaw sculpture about um, this um, mix between comics that I always also watched a lot when I was a kid, the Roadrunner one that I really love, and this, this um, scenery where you always have a background, meaning the desert, and then something happening in front, like a re really theater, theatrical, uh, yeah, 
thing that I'm still reproducing again with my sculpture, having them as a kind of personage since I give them name. And this kind of landscape, background, um, more geometrical um, uh, impression. Mm. And yeah, it's the mix of uh, all that. Of course, there is also the, the modernist uh, sculpture, uh, sculptor that I really liked and looked a lot when I was um, a student, maybe. But that's generally not a direct reference. So, so for example, we hear a lot about, uh, speaking about my work with Brancusi or Henri Moore, etc., which is uh, right, because I'm kind of trying also to reactivate some kind of those, those modernist shape. But that's not the, um, the, the most important or the essence of my, uh, my work, really. It's uh, lots of those shapes are coming intuitively, and I think we have all this uh, connection, of course, uh, being uh, human, that we kind of have this uh, primitivism as well, <clears throat> because some of the shape looks also very closely from uh, maybe African art as well. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, like one kind of uh, unity, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not speaking <laughs> no. so no. well English. That's great, no, thank you. Are there any other questions from the audience? And if not, I think we'll, um, we won't keep Claudia any longer <laughs> from finishing her work. And just wanted to say thank you so much thank for you. sharing. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.